Welcome back to Fresh Food Therapy. Today we're gonna to teach you a very important building block in your culinary arts, how to make rice, steamed rice, for you and your family. And then to make it a little bit more interesting, we're gonna teach you three quick dishes that can be prepared in minutes in the time that it takes that steamed rice to be prepared. Are you ready? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you how to make steamed rice very, very quickly. It's not complicated at all and you can do it with just a few moments. And then we're going to pour water just over the rice. Now rice generally is stored with a little bit of starch and what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all that starch. Wanna wash it three times very, very rapidly. And like I was saying, you can actually do this under the faucet in your sink in half the time and half the effort. But Okay, that's twice. And third time's a charm. And the rice that we're using today is a short grain, just standard white rice. Okay, now that the rice is washed, we're gonna transfer it into your rice cooker. This is an Aroma rice cooker. It's a 12 cup rice cooker. And very rapidly, very easily, we're just gonna get the rice into the rice cooker. Rice will generally expand to twice the size that it is. So what you wanna do is you wanna add water. And this is the unusual part of the process. The way to measure the water is the one knuckle method. You're gonna cover the rice so that it's covered with water and then you're gonna continue to put just up to one knuckle of, of water over the rice. You measure it as such, perfect. We put it into the rice cooker. The rice will take about 20 minutes to prepare, maybe 25. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it in right now and then we're gonna start prepping the dishes. we're gonna be prepping now is the Portuguese cabbage stew. And it really only requires a few ingredients and it's very, very quick together. Uh, we have fresh garlic, we have uh, medium onion, we have fresh ginger, and we have green cabbage. Ginger first, and then you're just gonna mince it. And it only requires a few seconds to mince this amount of garlic. The next is the medium onion. All we're gonna do really quickly is we're gonna trim the top and the bottom and then just peel the outer layers off. Don't be afraid if you lose one layer of onion, it's not that important. You're going to cut into the center. You'll see that it, it cuts into like little wedges and then you're gonna follow that all the way through until the whole onion is done. Onion has been wedged. Now we're going to the ginger. Ginger is out of this world, but it's very, very powerful. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that when you're using ginger, that you cut the pieces large so that you can find them in the recipe later because you want the flavor, but you don't necessarily want to eat it. The next is the green cabbage. And this is really easy, but you've gotta watch yourself because you're, you're gonna be putting the knife into something that's very, very dense, and there's a chance that the knife will go left and right. So to be very, very careful, what you're gonna do is cut into the core and cut it in half. You can use all of the, all of the cabbage, but the best thing to do is to cut out the core. And the way you do that is just by, again, there I was gonna cut towards myself, cut the core out. All right, now that you have the cabbage done, what we're gonna do is, for this recipe, lay it flat, and you're gonna cut it into thirds. And then, literally all you're gonna do is cut it into shreds.
Okay, so the next dish that we're gonna be preparing is our stir fry. So what we have in front of you today is we have just a few mushrooms, fresh onion, a yellow onion, a little bit of uh, Italian zucchini squash. We have a red pepper, a yellow pepper, some sugar snap peas, and some broccoli. Now, if you'd like, you can also have carrots, you can have bok choy, you can have celery. It's literally up to what you have in your refrigerator and what you, what you really like. For the mushrooms, what you would do is you would cut the stem off and then all you would do is cut in half and then trim down. Now mushrooms will melt um, in heat. So you don't wanna cut them too small because if you do, you won't have mushrooms when you're done with the, with the dish. For the onion, we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did before, we're gonna wedge it. So you cut the top off, you cut the bottom off, You just cut the top and the bottom off, put the waist to the side, cut it in half, so you now have a half moon, and all you have to do is cut. Once again, zucchini will melt the same way the mushrooms do, so you wanna cut them a little bit bigger so that as they become soft, they still have some volume in the stir fry. The smaller the zucchini, the generally the lighter the flavor and the sweeter the end result is. Uh, younger zucchinis are best for recipes that are delicate for flavor. When we prepare it for salad and such, we waste a lot of the pepper. But for, for stir fry, we can use almost everything. I'm gonna show you how much waste is left over when we prep it. So what we're gonna do, cut the top off, cut into the center, and that's what the pepper is gonna look like. The most important thing here is to realize that every part of this is edible except for the very stem and the pith and the seeds that are in the inside. So by cutting the pith out, you're left with the pepper that can be used. And it's really a significant amount of the vegetable. Now you do want to make sure that all the seeds get out because the seeds don't, don't add anything to the, uh, to the dish. Okay, so the yellow pepper is exactly the same as the red pepper. We cut the top off, we pop the stem off. We cut and we clean the seeds and the pith out. Now, what's really kind of funny is that there are people that will tell you that they can tell the difference between the flavors of the colors of the peppers. Um, maybe it's just me. It doesn't seem like there's that much of a difference to me. What you're really doing is you're choosing to use different colors because it adds vibrancy to the dish. You will find that peppers of different colors sometimes cost more. So if you're doing this for yourself and your family and you're trying to save a few dollars, there's nothing wrong with just using green bell peppers. Okay, pepper is done. Guess what, these are the sugar snap peas. Sugar snap peas, you don't have to do anything. As long as they're rinsed and cleaned, you can eat the whole thing. If you don't like the stems, there's nothing wrong with just trimming the edges off, if you like. But I'll be honest, I just wash them and use the whole thing. Now with broccoli, broccoli is a little bit interesting. Um, most people like the florets, which is the top. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but then you lose a lot of, of your vegetable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the florets off, and then you're left with the stem. Now, there's a lot of fiber in here, and that is something that probably turns off a lot of people, but there's a way to clean it so that the fiber is taken off and you're left with beautiful broccoli that you can eat. The only thing that we're gonna need to do is for the top of it, they can be cut into pieces. You just wanna cut them small so that the fiber that's in them um, is able to melt a little bit and you can get it cooked. But for the stem itself, this, the way that you're gonna save your food dollars and the way you're gonna get the most amount of nutrition out of it is we're just gonna trim off that very, very tough outer shell. And what you're left with is the inside which is actually edible, and I'll be honest, I really like it in my cooking. 
You just wanna cut them thin so that they, they cook in their tender. And you've prepped all your vegetables. Okay, this is the other dish that we're gonna be making called shoyu chicken. Uh, shoyu is a Chinese word meaning uh, soy sauce. Uh, I, I, I learned this actually from my mother who learned it from Joyce Chen. It's a very simple recipe and it's very, very quick, but the best part of it is this dish can be prepped in just minutes, but it lasts for about four or five days. So you can make it the night before and leave it in the refrigerator and then just reheat it for the family dinner no real fuss. What we're gonna do is very, very quickly, we're going to prep the celery, the broccoli, the bok choy, and the onions. And I have the chicken here. We're not gonna actually do anything to prep the chicken. We're actually gonna throw the chicken right into the pot the way it is. I have bone in, skin on thighs. There was a sale and it was 99 cents a pound for the chicken. I'm gonna tell you that we have about nine pieces of chicken here and each piece will feed a person. So you're looking at about 50 cents per person for the chicken for an entire meal. The things that are going to be put into the pot first are the onions, and then the celery, and then the broccoli, and then last the bok choy, because the onions and the chicken will cook together. The celery is the most fibrous next, and it requires the most amount of cooking time, and then the broccoli is next. The onion is wedged the exact same way as the two other dishes. The wedging is, is very quick and produces wonderful pieces of onion that kind of melt into the dish, giving it flavor, but also being able to be seen when you're plating it up so that it's something that is visually appealing at the same time. Okay, so for the bok choy, Literally everything can be used. Um, once it's been washed, everything is clean. Just trim the leaves. Now, because it will melt, you want them to be a little bit bigger. Like, almost like, uh, I wanna say a half an inch so that you can see it and you can taste it later in the recipe. But as you get closer to the bottom, it becomes more fibrous. So you wanna cut a little bit closer as you get to the bottom. And you can actually get pretty close to the very, very edge without wasting um, much of the, the vegetable. Now, in the very, very center, this is part of the core and it doesn't make for good eating. So you're gonna throw the core and the last bit of the, the bottom to the side as, as waste. Now the next is broccoli. We're gonna actually prep it almost exactly the same as we did the, the uh, stir fry dish. You're gonna cut off the florets. We're using almost all of the broccoli, which is great for your food dollar because you're paying for all of that. But a lot of people end up throwing away the, the stems because they, they don't know how to process it. Celery is fantastic for you and it has sodium, so it'll add a lot of flavor to the dish. You may not have to use as much salt if you're using uh, a little bit of fresh celery in your dish. We can use almost all of the celery. We're just gonna trim the top off, maybe an inch, so that it's all fresh. If there are leaves still attached at the top, don't worry, throw those in. They become part of the dish and they're edible. You don't have to trim off 30 to 40% of your celery because it doesn't look like what you want it to. Now we can go all the way down, but I'll be honest, we have enough celery for the dish, and what I'm probably gonna end up doing is cutting this off and using celery sticks so that we have some celery sticks and peanut butters as a snack later. Don't be afraid to put a little bit to the side and use it for something else. You now have the perfect size to dip into peanut butter. And you're prepped, and we're ready to go.
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start preparing the stir fry. The stir fry comes together very, very quickly. Um, I have a wok pan, but you can use a non-stick or a cast iron, uh, whatever you happen to have available. It's not gonna affect the dish too much. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the, the burner on the medium heat, and we're gonna add a little bit of oil to the pan. Just a little bit because once again, um, a little bit goes a long way with stir fry. You're gonna want to coat the pan And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the most fibrous and the ones that take the longest to cook. Specifically, I'm gonna put the onions in first. Then I'm gonna put in the broccoli. After a few moments of cooking, we can actually start putting in other, other vegetables, but you wanna give them a chance to cook up a little bit and soften. Just agitate a little bit, allowing the oil to coat the vegetables and the vegetables to get an even amount of heat for cooking purposes. Now that we have the broccoli and the onions going, we're gonna start adding the other ingredients. The most fibrous, again, we're gonna put in some sugar snap peas. We're gonna put in the multicolored peppers And we're gonna put in some zucchini. We're gonna reserve the mushrooms for a little bit later because those will cook down very, very rapidly. So now that the vegetables are getting to the point where they're perfectly tender and ready, we're gonna add the mushrooms just to let them sink into the dish a little bit. And then we're gonna go very rapidly into putting in the sauce. So now that the mushrooms are just starting to glisten with a little bit of oil and they can, you can tell that they're starting to cook down, we're ready to go into the final step, which is we're gonna add a package of Kikkoman stir fry sauce, sprinkling it very lightly over the vegetables. We're actually only using about half of the package. And then we're going to take the Kikkoman soy sauce and we're gonna add just enough to moisten. So ladies and gentlemen, the stir fry is pretty much done. The vegetables are tender and the sauce has coated all of it. It's ready to be put to the side and then served over steamed rice if you're ready for your, for your meal. Okay, so now we are moving into the cooking phase. Now, most of these dishes are gonna be very, very quick and very easy to put together. There may be a little bit of intricacy in what order you put the ingredients in, but I'll walk you through that and explain why. So the first one that we're gonna make is we're gonna make uh, the Portuguese cabbage stew. So you grab your pot, this is an eight quart pot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on medium heat. Into the pot, we're gonna add a little bit of vegetable oil. You don't need to use a lot of oil for this dish because the vegetables will actually start to sweat and give off moisture that the dish will cook in. The first thing that you wanna do is you wanna put in the onions. So the oil is getting hot and the onions are coated and they're starting to cook. I would give it maybe about, maybe a minute or two, just to the point where they're starting to soften a little bit. Now that the onions have been cooking for about a few minutes, they're starting to soften, they're starting to get caramelized, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in the garlic. And the garlic can be rough chopped, it doesn't have to be minced very finely because what will end up happening is it'll melt into the dish. And we're letting the garlic saute with the onions. We're building in flavor and we're also letting the the garlic sink into the dish. We're gonna add the garlic to the dish. Now that the onions, the garlic, and the ginger have been cooking for a little bit and the flavors are starting to mingle, we're gonna add the cabbage to it.
Now that the cabbage, the ginger, and the garlic have all been sauteing together for a little bit, we're gonna add the sauces. We're gonna start with a little bit of over-the-counter ragu. It's just uh, to add a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of depth to it. You don't need to add too much. Then we're gonna add some Tabasco. And then we're gonna finish with about a half a cup to a cup of soy sauce. The Kikamon soy sauce is my favorite. It's what I grew up with and that's what I use. Now everything is in and all it needs to do is stew uh, until it's tender and ready to go. I would say about no more than 20 minutes, 25. And then you can actually put the cover on the top and it'll help cook it faster. It'll actually steam to the, to the saute as well. So now we're going to be making the shoyu chicken. If the chicken isn't cooked all the way through, there's a chance that there's bacteria or, or other uh, pathogens, uh, toxins, that, that may enter into your uh, digestive tract. Onto a medium heat. And we're gonna add, again, just a little bit of, of oil to the, to the pot. Now the first thing that's gonna go into the pot is going to be the onions. Now we're gonna let the onions saute for just a little bit. Now I would give it about maybe two or three minutes um, to let the, the onions soften a little bit and let them almost start to caramelize because it's, gonna, it's going to cause the, the, the dish to be a little bit sweeter, a little bit more rich in, in flavor. There's just enough onions in the pan for us to literally say that it's coating the bottom. That's gonna serve a second purpose, which is going to keep the chicken slightly off of the direct heat so that it has a chance to, to cook and not dry out and it won't stick to the pan. We've got Foster Farms bone in, skin on thighs, and uh, we're, gonna take, we're gonna take approximately four of them now that the onions have started cooking down. And if you look real quick, you'll see that the chicken now coats the entire pan. Is I have a uh, about, I would say about a fourth of a cup of sugar, and we're gonna just very, very lightly sprinkle it over the top of the chicken. And now we're gonna take the kikuman soy sauce, and we're gonna pour about a cup of soy sauce over the top of the chicken. Sugar and soy sauce, that's the only seasoning for this dish. And it doesn't sound particularly sexy, but just wait, just wait. We're gonna let it cook for a little bit, but after four or five minutes, we're gonna take the, the chicken and we're gonna flip it. It should be a little bit browned on one side, and cooked about halfway through. And then when we flip it and we cook it on the other side, it should be to the point where it's cooked all the way through. But we're gonna do a test, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, so we've been having it cook for about seven or eight minutes now. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at it to see what it looks like. And you're seeing that the chicken is starting to get all the way through, but we have to make sure that it's cooked all the way through and even down to the bone. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna flip the chicken and you'll see that it's got a nice caramelized brown on the, uh, on the chicken. Okay, so now that the chicken is flipped, we're gonna let it cook for another seven or eight minutes to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. And then we'll do that trick that I was telling you about, which is we're gonna stick a fork in and we're gonna see if the meat flakes away, comes away from the bone cleanly, and whether it's cooked all the way through. Okay, so I promised you to know how the trick is to, to test. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just quickly pull a piece of chicken out, I'm gonna put it on a plate in front of you, and I'm gonna pull it so that you can see that the chicken is cooked all the way through. So there's the chicken and you're gonna cut into it and see if the meat flakes away. So we can see 
that they're still a little bit needing to be cooked. So we're gonna leave it in for a few more minutes, but you always wanna do this to see where the chicken is to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. Okay, it's been a few more minutes and the chicken is cooked all the way through and it's actually started flaking off of the bone. It's perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our vegetables now. Kind of a lot of vegetables to fit into a small pot, but don't worry. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with, we're gonna add more onions. We're gonna add the celery. And then we're gonna add the broccoli. So now that the vegetables have been steaming for a few moments, we're almost ready to finish the dish. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bok choy and add it to the pot and it'll steam. This is the best part of the whole thing. Cooking and learning how to cook is exciting and all, but it's really sitting down with your friends and your family to a really nice meal that makes it all worthwhile. So what we're gonna do is we're going to plate up a little bit of rice. We're gonna set the canvas for the dishes. Then we're gonna create each dish individually, and then we'll make a combo plate for you to enjoy. Are you ready? Each of these is a dish in and of itself and can be dinner for you, but if you're able to make all three, you can make your own version of a combo plate, like from a Chinese restaurant, with three different cultures on one plate. We've taught you how to make steamed rice for your family, so that you now have that as a basis for many, many new meals and recipes to come. But you've learned to make three quick dishes to go over steamed rice. You have the Portuguese cabbage stew, you've got the shoyu chicken, and you've got vegetable stir fry. The cost per serving is about $1.18 per portion for the Portuguese cabbage stew. For the shoyu chicken, it's about $2.43. It can be a little cheaper depending on the, the type of chicken that you use, or it could be a little bit more expensive if you go with a straight chicken breast. The stir fry, however, comes in at about 89 cents per portion. And it's a wonderful way for you to get all of your vegetables, minerals, and a great deal of color into your diet um, that doesn't really require a lot of time or energy. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the episode and we'll be cooking for you again sometime soon.